are ugly, but you are beautiful. And you fight like a thark. John Carter was initially envisioned as a trilogy, helmed by Toy Story's Andrew Stanton and adapting Edgar Rice Burroughs' sci-fi novel, A Princess of Mars. The first movie successfully crafted a captivating interstellar world, blending mythology, romance, and CGI-fueled action. Its potential as a franchise was evident, prompting Stanton's desire to expand it into a full-fledged series. The story follows John Carter, a Civil War veteran mysteriously transported to Mars, where he discovers extraordinary abilities like defying gravity. Amid encounters with fantastical creatures, he becomes embroiled in the planet's conflicts, emerging as a heroic figure. Taylor Kitsch, known for Friday Night Lights, portrayed Carter in the film. Despite the groundwork for sequels, John Carter's box office performance fell short of expectations, leading to Disney shelving plans for further installments. The original novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs provide ample source material for at least two additional sequels while the film itself concludes with an intriguing cliffhanger reminiscent of Avatar, hinting at further adventures on Mars. However, despite Andrew Stanton initially envisioning a trilogy for John Carter, subsequent films never materialized, due to a combination of marketing choices and unfortunate events following the initial release. Given its underwhelming box office results, despite its potential for expansion, one can help but ponder what went awry with Disney's adaptation of John Carter. John Carter II was supposed to be called Gods of Mars, according to Andrew Stanton as shared on Collider. Just like in the first film, Lynn Collins' character Deja would have narrated the beginning of the second one. The story kicks off with Deja telling their child, Carthoris, about the events of the first movie, believing he'll never meet his dad, John Carter. But then, Karen Hines' character, Tardos Moores, takes the child, promising to put him to bed. Plot twist. Tardos Moores is Matai Shang, played by Mark Strong from Kingsman, in disguise, who snatches the child and vanishes. The opening credits roll, and we're back where the first film ended, with John Carter returning to Barsoom. Fast forward a decade. Carter finds out Deja has gone down the river, hoping to find their abducted child. He teams up with Tars Tarkas and follows her lead stumbling upon a modern underground city ruled by the firstborn race. These guys are super into the goddess Isis and have been running the show on Barsoom since day one. Carter figures out that goddess Isis is just another one of Matai's disguises and sets out to expose him to the firstborns and save his son. The story's climax hits when Carter nearly fights his son, who's been turned into a superhuman warrior by Matai. Finally, Deja, Carter, and their son reunite, and the three races, the Red, the Green, and the Firstborn, team up to take down the Therns. As for John Carter III, titled Warlord of Mars, it's a race against time as Carter tries to find the Therns, who are plotting to destroy the entire planet. The Therns, using their shape-shifting skills, manipulate Martian leaders into fighting each other to stall for time. Meanwhile, Deja creates a device to identify the Therns in disguise, but they destroy it, before she can use it effectively. Tragically, they also kill John Carter, played by Taylor Kitsch, though they don't realize he's just a clone of the original Carter, who wakes up back on Earth. Back on Earth, Edgar rescues Carter from Thern agents and helps him return to Mars. With the threat of a world war looming, Carter and his family use the last Thern detector to track the Therns to the top of the world. There, Carter confronts Matai and defeats him, ultimately saving the planet and earning his title as the Warlord of Mars. Many of us already know why John Carter's sequels never came to fruition. The main reason was the movie's flop at the box office. Despite a production budget of $307 million, the film only managed to collect $281 million worldwide, even before considering tax rebates and marketing costs. Disney ended up announcing an expected loss of $200 million on the project, putting it in the league of big-budget box office disasters like Waterworld. When Disney lost the rights to the property in 2014, any hopes for sequels were dashed, leaving Andrew Stanton's promising ideas for future installments on the shelf. The fate of John Carter 2 and 3 is unfortunate on many levels, but it also serves as a stark reminder of how even minor missteps in marketing and branding 
can lead to significant financial losses. John Carter's failure at the box office is almost more well-known than the movie itself. Andrew Stanton had high hopes for what could have been the start of an exciting franchise. But on March 9, 2012, those hopes were dashed when the film opened to disappointing numbers and negative reviews. Despite earning $284 million globally, the movie's rumored $300 million production budget left it in the red. With dreams of sequels shattered, John Carter became just another big-budget Hollywood flop. For those unfamiliar with the original or in need of a recap, the story follows Confederate Army Captain John Carter, played by Taylor Kitsch, who accidentally transports himself to Mars with a mysterious medallion. There, he discovers his newfound superhuman abilities in the planet's low gravity and gets caught up in conflicts between Martian races. The first film ends with Carter returning to Mars after a clever ruse to outsmart the villainous Matai Shang. Stanton had ambitious plans for sequels, including Gods of Mars, which he recently revealed details about. The cancelled sequel would have featured a different character narrating each movie's prologue, offering a glimpse into the history of the world. Stanton's vision was rich with intrigue, but unfortunately, it never came to fruition. The failure of John Carter can be attributed to a variety of factors, but one significant hurdle was its flawed marketing campaign. Disney's decision to drop Of Mars from the title and lackluster promotion contributed to confusion among audiences. Despite Stanton's proven track record with Pixar, his transition to live-action filmmaking wasn't supported adequately by the marketing efforts. Stanton's imaginative plans for sequels, including a journey beneath the surface of Mars to uncover hidden truths, highlight what could have been a thrilling continuation of the story. But with Disney losing faith in the project and Stanton's departure from the live-action realm, the future of John Carter remains a missed opportunity in cinematic history. Edgar Rice Burroughs' pioneering John Carter series first emerged in serialized form in All Story magazine from February to July 1912. Set on the enigmatic Red Planet, the narrative introduces readers to a fading yet vibrant Martian civilization, replete with fantastical creatures and advanced technology. Protagonist John Carter, a Confederate Army captain, gains remarkable strength and agility due to Mars' lower gravity, essentially laying the groundwork for the archetype of comic book superheroes like Superman. Ultimately, a successful reboot of John Carter could not only redeem the legacy of the 2012 film, but also reaffirm Burroughs' seminal place in science fiction history. With careful planning and execution, a new adaptation has the potential to resonate with audiences and pave the way for more original stories to flourish in the genre. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Your suggestions for future videos are always welcome in the comments below.